We're here with John Zangardi, CEO of Red Horse Corporation and formerly CIO of the Department of Homeland Security and previously also with the Department of Defense and the former Navy CIO. And he's a member of the UiPath Public Sector Advisory Board as well. So John, thank you so much for taking time to join us. Wyatt, it's a pleasure to be here. Glad I could spend some time on this. Well, we'd like to just get your perspective about where has automation made a meaningful difference in your perspective on how the government is serving the public these days. Well, Wyatt, I'm a firm believer in uh, getting the most out of your taxpayer dollars now that technically I'm on the other side of the coin. Uh, when I was in DHS, and even to some extent when I was over as the acting DOD CIO, I started focusing the organization on automation, particularly in the back office, because that's where I saw the value. Uh, for example, at DHS, uh, I had to engage with the chief financial officer and the chief procurement officer, and even the chief, uh, what we call the chief, uh, the, uh, the head of HR, about finding repetitive processes that we could insert automation into to drive efficiencies and open up the ability for the organization to generate savings and then focus those savings, if you will, or efficiencies on other things. The idea was to make the organization more efficient and deliver services more expediently, more efficiently, and more effectively. Well, I'm curious, what do you see driving the growth of automation in government now? And, and how do you see that changing in the year ahead? And if so, why? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a really hard question to answer, Wyatt, but I'll take a stab at it. Um, I think first off, what's driving it is uh, on the part of government is there's a greater awareness of what's available in the commercial market space to fuel these sorts of things, right? But number two, along with that awareness of what's out there, you're beginning to get people into government places that want to do things differently. They want to innovate. They want to move uh, more quickly, if you will, if you can imagine a snail moving more quickly. I think the motivation is there, the technology is there, and they're beginning to get the expertise where they can accelerate these changes. So, you know, it's like anything. When you, when you want to get someone to buy anything, they first have to have a need for whatever they're buying, and whatever you're buying, you have to have the ability to take advantage of it. And I think right now, because of some initial successes in back offices like the finance office or the procurement office, People are saying, hey, this can deliver the things we need to make our business stronger, more robust, and deliver that kind of capability. So I think you're seeing that sort of change. Uh, also, you know, um, well, the old guard is moving aside, all right? And then the old guard, I mean, you've probably uh, talked about this in your past. We you have your grandmother in the front seat of your car, and how do you explain your job to her? Um, you know, it, it's sort of the same thing. The, the generation that's coming up grew up with uh, IT and the innovation that comes along with it, and they're far more comfortable with it. So I think there's a larger culture change going on where people are actually seeing the want to have these things put in place. Why can't I have that is really what I'm saying that people are beginning to experience and voice within these organizations. And then lastly, perhaps, how do you see automation continuing to evolve from, you know, what's traditionally been kind of a back office application to more mission centric activities in government? And what do you think will help accelerate that? First off, uh, mission, you know, when I was in DOD, really referred to the warfighter. But how do you differentiate between, you know, the, the ability of uh, an organization to deliver something more quickly to its customers? even though it's in the back office and not totally visible, or just something that's in the back office that delivers some greater efficiency. So what I'm trying to say why it is, I think the things we're seeing in the back office are actually mission related. You know, maybe not in that clear direct sense that I might've experienced while I was in DOD to help a warfighter accelerate the delivery of a kinetic or a non-kinetic effect. But if you think of it like this, a taxpayer logs onto some government website and they're asking for some sort of service, whether, you know, if it's a, a green card or some sort of work visa or maybe a FOIA request. If the back office is functioning more quickly and can deliver the result sooner because it's being powered by some form of automation, to me, that is mission. If the taxpayer, the customer, walks away more satisfied and surprised pleasantly that, wow, that, that was really quick, that was really smooth, and it was really friendly, 
I think that's mission related. Um, and you know, the faith of the average American uh, in government, the trust in government is at an all time low. I think by bringing in automation and creating a greater responsiveness on the part of government really can help repair that, I'll call it a disconnect or a lack of trust between the average taxpayer and government. I think that's really an important function. Uh, I think automation is gonna grow in scope in the next couple of years as we see machine learning and artificial intelligence becoming a more uh, prominent part of the technology space that's being offered. And you'll see it encompassing more and more parts of uh, what can be done within government to help further mission, to help further back office efficiencies. So I really think the future is bright for automation in the back office. And I think government is really just at the beginning of taking advantage of it. I suspect if we were to sit down five years from now, you'd be going, wow, we've really made some great strides. And think of it this way, uh, 10, 15 years ago, cloud was this alien concept. You know, nowadays cloud is ubiquitous. You're hearing the same thing in other concepts like zero trust. So the point I'm making why it is, Government adoption rates tend to be slower than commercial adoption rates. And I think in five years, you'll see a higher rate of adoption of um, automation in government. Absolutely. Well, John Zangardi, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to join us here and share your insights on automation uh, at this UI Path uh, conference uh, gathering. So thank you for being with us. Well, you're welcome. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me.